Um, circumcision is still, I would say, at least in my area, circumcision is still a back and forth, up and down kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, I would say the majority of my families don't circumcise. But really? Every, oh yeah. No, yeah. I, the vast majority don't. Every once in a while, I'd say at least maybe once a year. But mm-hmm. again, that's the, they will. That is a small amount. Mm-hmm. Very, very small amount. But again, we're doing a whole lot of information sharing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm encouraging people to watch the procedure, you know, to mm-hmm. actually like really look into it. And what do other countries do about circumcision? Is this mm-hmm. covered by insurance anymore? Oh, hey, no, actually, this is a cosmetic procedure. Hmm. What is male? Is genital- it covered by insurance? No. No, no, well, it's covered by insurance, but not by Medicaid is my okay. understanding right now. Yeah. Okay. Medicaid no longer covers it because it's a cosmetic procedure. It's cosmetic. How it's cosmetic. interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't have boys. So this is a world I know nothing about. Um, is it, are you, are you okay sharing your personal opinion on it? What do you, th- what do you think? Oh, yeah. So um, to me, like I said, my background was in nursing and I assisted with circumcisions in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was incredibly eye-opening to realize Mm -hmm. what a body board was and, you know, that some pediatricians numb them and some do not, Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, this is the babies cannot be given really anything besides homeopathy for pain. Yeah. Uh, That it's, yeah, that it's a big deal that babies routinely die from circumcision um, from side effects from circumcision. Yeah. No, they'll bleed to death. They'll get infections. Yeah. Circumcisions, um, circumcisions can be incredibly risky. So, Hmm. uh, it's very, very important that people go into it actually informed because most people come into it. Oh, my husband's circumcised. So my son's circumcised to look the same, you know, it's the pediatrician is going to do it on Monday. Like, and they, you know, they're not looking back. They're not looking into it unless they have someone that's like, Hey, I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it, I want to see you go somewhere good. I tell people all the time. I'm really snobby. Yeah. Um, I'm snobby about where my people go for care. I'm very (laughs) snobby about where they go for chiropractic, for body work, for obviously lip and tongue ties. Like (laughs) I, I have specific places that I trust that I vetted. Um, and most of my people are like, oh no, we like you snobby, please be <laughs> snobby. Show us your snob. You're the um, good kind of snobby for sure. The, the good kind of snobby, like, and it's, <laughs> it, is, yeah. it matters to me. I, I don't want to see someone take their son's genitals. And if they are intending to do this procedure, which is okay, it's informed choice. And sometimes there is yeah. religious reasons to do it. I am not. Yeah going to stand on a soapbox and say, this should never be done, That you know, it's, it's your baby, it's your choice, but I want you to go into it understanding what is this going to look like? What's it going to do to your breastfeeding relationship or what can it do to your breastfeeding relationship? What are some things that you can encounter when you get home? What is the most common panicked call that I get post circumcision? Like we're discussing all of these things going into it. And then my families get to choose whether they want to do it or not. And across the board, most of them watch the videos. They look yeah. at the websites. Uh, they look at the statistics and they talk to their friends that they didn't even know their sons weren't circumcised. Mm. And then they make their decision. 